Last time on Avatar The Last Airbender, I got a copyright claim from Viacom. Thanks, Viacom. It's funny doing a show about the hero's journey and being heroic, just to have some bureaucrat at Viacom strike me down. Is this your hero's journey, Viacom? Your hero's journey is to strike down small YouTubers' channels for talking about themes related to life and heroism? Apparently, Viacom's hero journey is to make frivolous claims, so that's fun. I have to be more careful going forward. It's going to be a lot more talking, a lot less Avatar, but that's how it is. But I still think we can discuss the show in a meaningful way and work around the copyright issues because I think the show has a lot to offer and you guys have been saying just keep going and just be patient it gets good I don't mind a slow build honestly I'm fine if the show takes time building characters because I know that's important for things to all come together in the end if like three of these videos end up being public so be it all right let's go to episode what are we on now today will be episode five and six then everything changed when the fire nation attacked I'm getting better I used to always come here to visit my friend Boomy. wow wait eh there's something so nice about any show, or game for that matter, where the central plot is revolved around traveling and going to different cities. I've been very impacted by that kind of story ever since I was young. I think I remember being about 10 or 11 when I first played the game Final Fantasy VII, and just the fact that you can go from town to town and world to world, it occurred to me that maybe life could actually be like that. And I think that it's shows like this and games like this that led to me living abroad for, for so many years. It's never quite the same. I think one thing that these shows have that it's hard to emulate as a human being traveling is you don't have a central purpose. Like for Aang, and uh, Katara and her brother, whose name I still don't know, they're on a quest to help Aang learn the different bending skills, and so hopefully to become the Avatar, and then to defeat the Fire Nation, I guess? That gives so much more meaning to each place they visit, because each part of it is a step in the journey, and, and like a link in the chain. When you're a traveler, when you're just a dude, like, going in the world, you get an experience of culture, and you get to meet new people, and you get the variety of life that's so appealing about this kind of thing, but it kind of, you're missing that narrative thread, and I've been looking for that for so long. I've been like, what's my, what's my narrative, you know? What's my major goal? What are my travels leading to? And more broadly, what is my life leading to? All these different experiences. I think that you have to be kind of lucky to have the call. Speaking of the hero's journey, something or someone calls you. And I've never experienced something as direct a call as something like this, where literally they're like, we need to go to the different temples and learn bending. I wish somebody would come to me, like a Gandalf or something like that, and be like, Alex, we need to go to Japan because the stones. Like, get the stones. Use the stones to defeat the evil. That's maybe something that these narratives don't prepare you for, is that you kind of have to make your own journey. Nobody's gonna call you. And that's something I wish I paid attention to starting when I was younger. I was kind of always waiting for the call. I mean, I went out there into the world and I, I, you know, I found great things and I had a lot of fun. But I'm still looking for, like, that central narrative purpose, if that makes sense. We've watched one minute. Viacom might take copyright action on my life. It could be dangerous if people find out you're the Avatar. Just tell me who you are. Name's Bonzu! Pippin Petalopsicopolis! June Pippin Petalopsicopolis. Why do they sound Greek? <laughs> earth bending brings the pages up! Oh, we got some earthbenders for the first time. Is gravity earth bending? Oh, okay. Look around you! What do you see? Um, the mail system? Instead of seeing what they want you to see, you gotta open your brain to the possibilities. Look at the moon, not the finger pointing to the moon. Don't. Concentrate on the finger or you will miss all that heavenly glory. Now that I'm here, I'm starting to have seconds. Ah! What is it about wild and somewhat dangerous experiences that is linked to bonding? A lot of times when you have this kind of ensemble group traveling, they have these dangerous and exciting and kind of zany episodes like the mailroom roller coaster but what purpose does it serve in my own experience i think actually these things are are great bonding moments because you have that moment with someone forever and also it's a distinct point in time that you'll never forget and so it makes the journey seem longer i have a theory that the monkey is the master just because of the way they panned to him last time when they were talking about the master and also because he likes the gooey center the, the food thing i'm from kangaroo island oh, kangaroo island that's so weird me too this is really hopping. <laughs> the Avatar. He's not very good at keeping a low profile. You guys pointed out to me last time that the reason people know he's the Avatar is because there haven't been any airbenders forever, and the next Avatar is an airbender. So I don't know how he's gonna navigate that. Let us leave. Let us leave. I appreciate his jokes. They're the they're Avatar. cute. What do you think of my new outfit? I want your honest opinion. Love it. By nightfall, your friends will be completely covered in it. Terrible fate, really. 
I'll do what you want. I get the idea that in this show there are no like actual bad guys. Or maybe there'll be one like grand bad guy, but Zuko was introduced as the first villain, but is not a villain clearly. This guy is doing weird things to Aang's friends, but you know, it's gonna be revealed maybe that it's for a reason, or he's trying to help Aang awaken his powers or something like that. I don't know. That sequence was nice. The animation, a lot of little details that I appreciate. Oh. I'm confused about what that last challenge was, even. I choose you. He's gonna be the... Joyce. He's gonna be the hardest one to fight. I'm the most powerful earthbender you'll ever see. Nice. Damn, that armpit hair, though. So they can all kind of do some, like, force stuff. I guess it's gravity. That makes a lot of sense. I was unfair to earthbenders earlier. That was cool. But what's the point of tests if you don't learn anything? Oh, come on! Mm -hmm. Answer this one question. What is my name? From the looks of your friends, I'd say you only have a few minutes. How am I supposed to know his name? Think about the challenges. Maybe it's some kind of riddle. I got it! Yeah? He's an earthbender, right? Rocky! <laughs> I, I want to think about this for a minute. What's his name? Is it something I could know from having watched? It's not Rocky. Or is it? I'm the most powerful earthbender. Lettuce. Something about lettuce? What do you think of my new clothes? They're new? I know his name. That moment when Aang is smarter than you. Same way I solved the challenges. I had to open my brains to the possibilities. Boomy, you're a mad genius. Boomy? Oh, Boomy! The, the, the kid! Ah! Look at the moon, not the finger pointing to the moon. I hope you will think like a man, genius. Nice. <laughs> I'm glad that he wasn't evil. How did I not realize I was his friend? Okay, on to episode six. Another earthbender. Lots of earth today. What was the pattern? I can't remember. Is earth the first one? I remember my first crush. Oh, they're just here. They obviously occupy all the lands. I've already paid you this week. The tax just doubled. Tax is pretty much the most evil thing there is. I lost my mother in a Fire Nation raid. This necklace is all I have left of her. It's not enough. Well, that's a loss. I guess I didn't completely get the severity of the war from the first few episodes. Peru, you pretty strong. Did it. That was more than he needed to do. Come on, dude. Ugh. There are people like that. There are people who actually will think that their duty to the law is above just common decency and goodness. People like that facilitate the deterioration of trust among people so fast. But there are people like that. There are people who are motivated to take you down just out of a sense of duty without any kind of self-introspection about what it means or the implications of that or genuine kindness. They took him. They took Haru away. We don't need to track him. The Fire Nation is going to take me right to Haru. Because I'm going to get captured. Going to arrest me for earth bending. Earth bending. Twelve hours to find Haru. We'll be right behind you. That's a pretty bold plan. You are miles away from any rock or earth. So oh, that's interesting. So it's only rock and dirt. I guess that would make it tough though, because that's everywhere. It reminds me of X-Men, where Magneto takes tiny pieces of metal from various sources and combines it into a bullet. Maybe the Earthbenders could do that with dust. There's so much potential in this elemental system. Earthbenders, you don't know me, but I know of you. Some of you may think that the Fire Nation has made you powerless, but they can't take away your courage, and it is your courage they should truly fear. Wow, where's this coming it runs from? Deeper than any mine you've been forced to dig. This is a brilliant the time speech. To fight back is now. Come on, do it. There we go. Come on. Oh, look at look at Sokka go. Guys, 
so there you go, bullets. I want to thank you for saving me. For saving it's us. a big move by Katara. Cool. All right, so basically the last two episodes are just continuing the world building. We got to see some earth bending, which is cool. I'm glad for that. There's just a lot to learn about the universe and the world and the different bending skills. Earth bending is definitely cooler than I thought. I'm super excited to see what happens later on. But I mean, I'm already enjoying it. I think it's it's fun. It's a, it's it's a really fun show, and I'm getting glimpses of the fact that they put a lot of depth into it. That it's not just surface level good guy bad guy show, which is very very reassuring. So thank you guys for watching and I will see you for the next installment for episode 7 and 8.